what's going on so in this video we're going to connect our react front end with our socket io back end so the first thing you want to do is go over here to our front end repo and let's install a dependency and that dependency is called socket.io client and we're going to need this in order to communicate with our socket io back end and so we're going to we want to instantiate an instance of that client so i'm just going to go over here to our source source folder and create a file called socket.js and here we're going to want to import io from socket.io dash client and then we're going to want to do const i i or const socket equals new io like that and it takes in in it takes in a url as the first argument to the constructor so the url of your backend and in this case we're just going to put http localhost 4000 and then as the second parameter it takes in an object and so here we want to make sure that we put auto connect to false because we don't want um the socket to connect to our backend when our user is not logged in so we want to connect manually so make sure you put auto connect false and then we're going to need another one here called with credentials make sure that's true so that's basically saying we're going to send over any cookies that we have on our client on our front end it's going to be sent over with our initial socket connection okay so let me just export this as the default export of this file like that and then over here um we're gonna use that in our home um, component so basically the home page when the user signs in so first of all i just want to create a hook and i'm gonna just create it right here called use socket setup dot js or dot jsx and I just want to put this in a separate um, file to keep my home component organized. So here we're going to create a hook called use socket setup like that. And then this hook has a use effect. And this is where um, we're going to set up socket IO in this inside of this use effect. And so here we're just going to do import um, our socket instance. So import socket from over here in our file that we created and so in this use effect we want to do socket dot connect just connect to our backend like that and then we're going to want to do export default use socket setup and over here in our home component all we got to do is run that hook so use socket setup like that Okay, and so it's going to run this use effect in, in our home component. So we're also going to want to do socket.on connect error. So if there's an error connecting to our backend, we're going to run this callback. And then if there's an error connecting to our, our, our backend web socket, we want to log the user out because if they can't connect to our backend socket IO, then they can't even use our application. So we might as well just log them out. and. To do that, I'm going to import set user from a use context, and then I'm going to import the account context that we created in previous episodes. So let me just import that. And that was in our upper directory here, account context. So if there's an error connecting them, we just do set user to an object with logged in set to false. And then every time you do like socket.on, which you're registering an, an event listener. So I'm registering this callback to the event connect error. You want to clean that up whenever this component unmounts. So whenever our home component unmounts, we want to um, disassociate this callback with this event because then we can do duplicate callbacks and duplicate listenings to events which is bad so to do that in use effect you just return a function and this function you would clean up 
anything that you want. So we here we we'll do socket dot off connect error because we don't want to listen to events and establish multiple listeners to the same event. And here it wants a, de a dependency, so we just pass in set user as a dependency, which will not change. Set user does not change. Okay, and that's all we need for now in our um, front end. That's all we need for now. So I'm gonna go over here to the console of my backend, and I made it so if you watched in the previous episodes, when a user connects, so the connect event is. Um, is done so a user connects it's going to call this callback and it's going to print out the user's username and if you want to know how to use ex express sessions with socket.io check out my last video so let's refresh and nothing's happening so let's check over here in the console and here we see a cores error so something's wrong with cores and that would be because over here in our socket.io um, backend server we're calling the cores field with this object. And let me go to the object over here. It's in this file. I'm um, sorry, it's in this file right here. So this is the cores object, which has an origin of our front end domain and credential set to true. I don't know why, but socket.io doesn't want you to set credentials to a string. It wants it to not be a string. And so once we take off the quotation marks, it works, which is pretty odd. And okay, and the console was kind of screaming at me because in my chat component, I didn't have a tab panel here. Like I just had the tab panels component with no tab panel as a child. And you, I guess you can't do that with Tracker UI. So yeah, other than that, we're all set up to start using WebSockets to do some communication. And here you can see in my backend over here, we're printing out the user session username. So, and let's print out something else. Let's print out socket.id. So every socket connection gets its own ID to uniquely identify it. But every time we connect, it's a new ID. And that's not gonna really be good for us because we wanna make it so that you can add a friends to your friend list and that you communicate them using that ID and that username. And with Socket.io, you can use IDs to send messages to different IDs and stuff in that nature. But if a user gets a different ID every time they connect, that's not really gonna work for us. So in the next video, we're gonna make it so that a user gets um, an ID that's tied to their account. And then we can add users by their username and then communicate with them with their unique ID that never changes. So yeah, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.